All right. Welcome back, everybody, to the kickoff episode of Think Virtual. I'm looking forward to co-hosting with Jamie Garbalia, um, CEO and owner of Virtual Administrative Consulting, also uh, my sister-in-law, so for full transparency. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie, um, uh, you know, I, I, I'm looking forward to co-hosting this with you because as somebody who's been working virtually with people for many, 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 many years all over the country, um, you know, it's, it, it's, I think people don't realize how easy it is to work with virtual people. Um, and what I love about virtual is you can really get best of class no matter where they are in the country. And it's such a great platform. So I thought it'd be such a good idea to, you know, um, I've been doing these kind of sub um, podcasts and this one seemed like just, it just seemed perfect, especially with the times of COVID. Um, sure. where yeah where everybody is working a little bit more remotely or a lot more remotely now and probably will be in the near future you know studies have shown pre-covid that 85 percent of the jobs that exist by the year 2030 um, don't exist today and i think COVID accelerated that other studies show that by the year 2025 75 percent of the global workforce will be millennials and that doesn't include gen z's which are very um, pro working not only virtually with virtual people, but working virtually and remotely. These were pre-COVID numbers. Another pre-COVID number was that um, 50, about 51% of the workforce by the year 2027 would be freelancers. And so now you take COVID and it just accelerates all of that and puts it on steroids. And now you have a company, Virtual Administrative Consultants, um, so talk a little bit about how you differ from a virtual consultant. I think just to kind of, so people understand the foundation of what you do versus um, what other virtual um, consultants do. Yeah, so there are different, well, first of all, thanks. I'm really excited to have this, this conversation with you too, and hopefully continue to have multiple conversations with you yeah. about things virtual. I, I really do think this is timely and those stats are incredible because really the this is like such a dramatic shift in how, all companies have done business and the bigger companies like Google and Twitter and all these companies that have said, okay, we're going to just work remotely forever um, or till 2021, um, they are going to have people in-house to be able to help them navigate that. But it's really those smaller businesses that this is new. They really have been used to having people in person and really just need some skills and tips and tricks. And like you said, it is not hard. It is just a new set of skills that we have to learn and a little bit of thinking outside the box, a little bit of thinking differently for common sense, and um, maybe thinking a little bit more employee centered than maybe we ever have. So, which, so are, which, are, which are good things, which are really good things. And I really think, what I, and what I love about what you're doing is I think what COVID really showcased to many companies, small, medium, and large, is that. <clears throat> They did not have the systems, the processes, the onboarding, the training documented, right? They had it in their heads. They had it intuitively mm -hmm. as they walked and talked the floors, um, but they but they did not have it in writing. And, and now they realize how critical that is and how much money they are losing by not having it done. So let's let's start there, you know. So so you know, when it comes to how important are systems and processes and onboarding. And 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 long term onboarding. You know, yeah. I'm not of onboard for two weeks and then boom, you're done. Yeah. It, they're really right now they're everything. So I know that oftentimes people think that. Um, and right now, my social media this week is completely focused on standard operating procedures. It's um, so I know that a lot of companies think standard operating procedures, processes, and systems. Um, stifle creativity. And I think there that's anything but the truth. It's really the only way to grow consistently. It's only the only way to grow with the best minds coming up with the best processes over time, changing as you go, but knowing that everybody knows the play, playbook. And so I think I, I argue that it actually fosters creativity because we're always taking the best of what's coming out of a company and documenting it. And it's evolving. It's, these are live, live, um, 
you know, documents that go in. So, so processes and systems are so important. Oftentimes, especially when you're in major growth, you are so in your business reacting to everything coming up because you are doing well and it's, it's fantastic and you're bringing people on, but we stop, we don't stop and say, okay, I need to go back and I really need to document this. I really need to figure out what the best way is. And sometimes bringing people in from the outside is the only way. So to answer your first question, um, hold on, before uh, we answer the first question, I just want to say, if, if, if I would, I would, as a business coach working with all different brands of companies, all different kinds of companies, for people to think that systems and processes and some structure to build for, for work more foundation stifles creativity, I would say you probably have the wrong people because mm -hmm. the right people want to come in and like you said, strategize, knowing that they're all coming in on the same page because they understand the infrastructure and, and, and so, yeah, so I just, yeah. And time and money, right? Time and money. Yeah. We always talk yeah. about how when you lose an employee and you have to train a new one, how much money that takes and yeah. how much time that takes of your team, just having it all laid out. There's so many tools out there um, to, and it's part of what we're going to talk about today, but so yeah. many tools out there to get um, all of your documents in one place. So yeah, absolutely. So uh, really today and, you know, yeah, Tell me if, you, yeah. if, if you want to dive in or not today, we really yeah. wanted to talk about um, tips for managing virtual teams. Yeah. Right. Okay. So, yeah. Absolutely. And I think that this is, you know, people are some people are getting it and it's great. And some people are floundering and figuring out, like, what do we do? And we're about we're on the precipice of if depending on where you are in the country of a new shift because school is virtual and this is going to change everything right now for your employees. So first I would say as an employee, as an employer, um, you need to seek to understand the individual's needs of your work. So of working from home of your team. Yeah. So what times of day is best for them? Do they have kids at home? Are they caring for somebody that's sick or has COVID? Um, what are, are you able and to flex time? Like it's not business as usual. People are going to have to work off hours, odd times. And I think as a manager or managing teams or as an, um, as, as a business owner, knowing how, you know, some sort of framework of what they can work in, but knowing that maybe this person is home with three kids and yeah. how are they going to manage that? Um, and how, and how are you going to help manage it for them? So being really in tune with your team, um, yeah. and, and knowing, say, yeah, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, no, that's, and, and just knowing when they can work efficiently and effectively rather than just like expecting it to be nine to five or, or 24 hours, which some companies work. Too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I think, but I think it's also understand, I just want to dive deeper into that, understanding the driver of each person, mm -hmm. uh, having one-on-one -on -one, um, weekly meetings with them, even if they're five minute huddles, right? I mean, really setting a very specific and measurable plan on a on a weekly basis with your people, I think is really, really key. Over communicate is, is, is very important right now. And that's Absolutely. not micromanaging. managing. It's just over communicating. Sure, for sure. So daily and weekly group huddles was was like the next thing on my list. So it was really, I think it's really, really important for everybody to just kind of see each other for, it doesn't have to be long. It can be 15 minutes. It's just you saying, hey team, we're here. Let's get a game plan in place. Let's get a game plan for the week if they're Monday morning, which I think is a great, you know, Monday mornings are a perfect way to start out your week. Or if you know some people need more, okay, just every day, quick call. How are you doing today? What's going on with you today? Here are your goals today. Um, and keeping everybody accountable, setting the expectations, and allowing them to check in as a group as a whole as well yeah. is, think, is really important. Yeah, I think those are – and the only thing I would add to that is that um, uh, meetings are so important. Have an agenda for every single meeting, no matter how small or how big. Mm -hmm. um, and number two – um, those aren't the only times you're talking. And so, you, of course, you want to protect your time in a way, but accessibility and approachability are key, especially in times where you can't just walk into somebody's office. So whether it's sure. having Zoom open for office hours so people can just chime into your um, computer screen, whatever whatever that means, you got to you gotta think a little bit outside the box. Absolutely. Um, also, you know, having accountability um, expectation and reporting expectations are really important right now. So making sure that there are clear and defined expectations so that people know, okay, I'm not coming in and we're not talking about this in the way that we used to, but you are still responsible and have the expectation to report out KPI metrics at four o'clock on this 
Google Doc or in Slack or in Trello or whatever your company uses. And so not only having the software and the platform where now everybody can work virtually and communicate with each other virtually, and there are softwares out there, Slack, like I said, Trello, even Google Suite, G Suite, yeah. just to be able to collaborate on documents. Um, if you wanted to do, a, you know, a WhatsApp, um, you know, group groups chats in there too, just some way that people can communicate with each other and report in one yeah. uh, system to report in. Yeah, the only thing I'll add to that one is no responsibility equals no accountability, and so you yeah. need to be able to understand all of the elements of what everybody's uh, what everybody needs to do. For sure, for yeah. sure. Just because we're not in person doesn't mean that it all you know it all goes to the to win, yeah. win, or whatever that saying is. So well, I think it goes to the birds or the whatever. The but, birds. That's right. <laughs> but, but what I do think is, um, but what I do think. Well, let me define this. What I do think is that in the beginning of uh, of COVID, you know, people were very sensitive and for the right reasons. You know, nurturing their people, getting them kind of you know used to, to some of this and acclimated. Uh, but now accountability is, 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 is expected and needed. For sure. For yeah. sure. Um, I think that it's really important right now, like stress is so high for everybody and most people are just doing the best that they can. You know, it's been a long slog here and we don't really yeah. know when it's coming to an end. And so making sure as, as a manager and an owner that you have appreciate, like that you're appreciating your team and making time, building in some time for that. It doesn't have to be, um, you know, so structured that it seems fake, but yeah. that it's not just all business as usual. You know, uh, everything, every time you get on a Zoom call, every time you get on a whatever, it's just business, business, business. Right. Take time to you know, appreciate people and actually having a structure in place for your team to appreciate each other is really wonderful. We used to start meetings um, at a company that I work for um, where it was based on the mission, vision and values. And we asked somebody to come with an example of somebody else in the company to a Zoom call and shout out people who were following those key values for our yeah. team. And it just gives kudos and it sets the stage for just kind of a happier virtual work environment. Yeah, um, I'll give everybody a tip right now that costs nothing. Um, and I see it um, not in companies enough is just um, tell people thank you, right? Um, that's, it's very, it doesn't cost anything. And I challenge, I challenge everyone out there to say thank you to at least one person every day for 30 days. It's a very difficult thing for many people to do. You know, people right now want to feel like they matter. People want to come to work and do a great job. They want mm -hmm. to balance their family, um, make money, and feel appreciated. And if you can't do that, recruiters are on the hunt right now. Mm -hmm. Recruiters are on the hunt. Because if really, they can access top talent at home, they don't have to get through a gatekeeper. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And as things open up more, people are have, are leaving companies, looking for new opportunities. And so um, just, just a little gratitude. Yeah. You know? Um, so also I think we don't want to take into, we want to take into consideration that not everybody's home situation is the same. And so being able to give people the tools that they need to work from home, like maybe um, a, a laptop, a phone, things that you just had at your office that you're not even thinking. We, we think that everybody has a, a laptop at home or a, or a, you know, desktop, but are those things 15 years old because they've never gone on them? Or yeah. are their kids now needing to use them for school virtually? So um, maybe a stipend or something in order to help people. And I know that, you know, sometimes, you know, in some companies, you know, budgets are tight right now. We just went through something kind of major, but it, it'll help everybody work more efficiently if they have the right tools and aren't scrambling and stressed out about having to spend a thousand dollars on a laptop right now. Yeah. Um, yeah. So just yeah, checking well, in. Yeah, well, it's about looking at things as an investment or an expense. Am I going to invest a thousand dollars in a laptop for one of my people when I know I can make you know X amount of dollars above that? So you know that's that's important. You've got to your people are your best investment. So yeah, and we just can't expect that everybody has what they need. I, I think that, and I and I also think that that employers are nervous right now. So I mean, employees are nervous right now to make any waves. So they may not ask. Yeah. Um, so it'd be great if, if the employer brought up the conversation or the manager. 
Um, my next uh, tip was to have a standing, and we talked about this before, but a regular standing one-on-one -on -one with your direct reports. So yeah. it is so important that people can connect with each other and make time to, you know, that water cooler, that water cooler time is not there anymore. So right. make sure you're connecting individually. Ha like you said, have a set agenda, making sure that you are um, taking the time. It may take more time and it doesn't have to be it's not daily. It can be weekly. It can be biweekly. Um, just so you're connecting with all of your direct reports specifically. Right. I think what, one of the reasons I think this is so important, Jamie, is because one of the things people miss because of the internet and especially right now um, and this on-demand microwave culture mm -hmm. is that there's no there's limited predictability, and so your people need something predictable on the books where they know they can they can table it, they can push it. Let's say. By you know, um, you know, at, on Tuesdays at four o'clock, I'm meeting with X. So right. I think that's I think that's really important. So yeah. okay. what's next? The next is is not only the software for communicating, which we talked about earlier, like having Slack or some sort of system where people can communicate and collaborate with each other, but also having software where people can find documents and the latest. Um, documents and, and processes that they need, like the standard operating procedures in one spot yeah. that are constantly being changed. And that is in the same spot. So it used to be that like sometimes people have one document on their desktop and then another one in Dropbox and then another one in Google Suite. Like we need to condense it, bring it into one location and um, and really have one you know, central place. This can be for all your HR documents too, um, trainings, if you have any digital trainings or virtual trainings. So, you know, I, I've been talking a lot about this to you, John, I know because we've been kind of working with this with different clients, but um, Trainual is this amazing software that's out, uh, it's cloud-based software that's out there. It's called it's trainual.com. It's actually my tech tip Tuesday on my social media today, yeah. but go on to their website. I'm, I'm definitely not paid by them. Go on to their website and check out their demo. And it's just a platform that um, you can, you can house everything that you need, all your yeah. documents in one place. And you can yeah. push learning out to people too. So if I know, John, you needed to reread this, you know, standard operating procedure, I'm going to push out that specific document to you. And as a manager, I can check to make sure you've gotten it done all on my dashboard. Yeah. So I, yeah. I love what you're talking about because to me over the next decade, and if you're not there now, you'll be already behind. But over the next decade, every single company, especially right now, e-commerce is the only way to grow your company, whether you sell a widget or you're a professional service firm. You mm -hmm. must use the platforms to make things easily accessible um, and, 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 and have it there at people's fingertips in a very virtual, video, easy, digestible way. And so yeah. this, this, is, this is critical. This is critical. All right, Jamie. What's yeah. next, Jamie? Of our uh, over communicate, over communicate, over communicate. Like, you know. Oh, wait, just... I didn't, what did you say? Over communicate. No, I heard you. That was <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Um. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, uh, good. well, I think that um, I think that's critical. You can't over communicate enough, but make sure when you're communicating, you're actually a good communicator and an effective communicator, and it incorporates a level of empathy and gratitude, um, you know, and and forgiveness if people make mistakes, because there's going to be a lot of mistakes made just because of what we're what we're in right now. So. Um, under, uh, I would say articulate what those mistakes are. Like be very like, here's what to do and here's what a mistake looks like. Define mm -hmm. for people and then reverse engineer the solution on, uh, on what's right. Absolutely, absolutely. Right, good. So more on how to uh, grow a virtual team. What's next? Have fun. Like, so let's not forget that we need to create a culture outside of the workplace, which is probably one of the hardest things to do yeah. um, because you're just not in person and the relationships are different. But so, for example, um, 
one of the companies I work for um, uses WhatsApp and there's just a bunch of different teams in there and there's just memes going back and forth. People are kind of ragging on each other in a very fun way, not not anything that's, that's you know, over, oh, stepping over the line, but there's a lot of back and forth. And, and for a moment we were looking and thinking, is this, is this just a waste of people's time? Like, should we yeah. not, should we pull this, this WhatsApp? It's getting, it's getting too bogged down with stuff. And then we thought, you know what? No, this is about culture. People are having fun. And they're making connections in this way. And so just having a way in which you can have fun with it. Um, you know, I don't know. I know that there's all those apps out there with games and that sort of thing. But could, can you have some sort of virtual team outing in a way um, yeah. that can make it fun for you? So keep your culture alive. Yeah, good. I think it's important. I think people have to. This one's, I think, a really, and you said this, it's extra hard right now to yeah. create that culture and keep it alive. And this is where leaders are made, where leaders have to like bring the energy, infuse inspiration into their team, positivity, reality, and just, you know, if, if you're doing everything that you're talking about, um, a lot this, this, a piece of it takes care of itself and then it's easier to kind of, you know, roll in. And, exactly. And you have to do as a leader. Um, all right, good. And then number 10. Number 10, we talked about it earlier, but I'm talking about it again. Um, you have new employees coming in, they need to be trained and you need to have a training process and training yeah. system. Do you have a mentor program? What does your training look like? This now is the time that you have to develop those things so that they are, are people don't want to come into a company and, and feel like they're on an island. So, and with no help and no support. So what is training look, what does your training look like? And if you don't have something in place, now is the time to spend extra time thinking about it get yeah. your key players in place get get a little team in place to develop some trainings yeah you know i do a lot of coaching and i do a lot of training and one of the things i see and i hear from companies all the time our companies will say you know we don't do enough training because we don't have the capacity of people to train our people or we don't have the capacity of the or the skill level of people to actually train other people mm -hmm. we also you know, um, don't know if we want to, and we don't have a budget to invest in the training of the salespeople, of the, you know, operations, of the managers, of the this. And that, that to me is a, is a foolish uh, decision. You must invest in training your people. I mean, if you look at millennials who are going to be occupying 75% of the global workforce within the next five years, you know, the reason they leave companies and their average span of staying at a company, you know, it was about three to four years is because they, they don't have the proper mentorship. They don't have the proper training. And, you know, that's, they're, they're hungry for that type of stuff. Yeah. And so it's really, a it's, you know, all of the things you're mentioning are so, um, they're so simple, they're complicated. And so, <laughs> um, and, and companies make them really complicated, but it's just about, you know, taking pen to paper, updating your three-year plan now that COVID yeah. has hit and making sure that you're hitting all of these and hiring best of class virtual people to actually do it. Right. So I want to kind of talk a little bit about you for a minute. Okay. Uh, you know, as far as so how does somebody like you help, you know, in, you know, create this? Because I think a lot of people are listening and saying, well, this is great. This sounds great. I want to do it, but I'm but I feel frozen. So how does yeah. that work? So, um, you know, hiring, whether you're, whether you need somebody to just take some, um, of the pressure off of your day to day so that you can go ahead and develop these systems by hiring what you had said earlier, like a virtual assistant, which is more of, um, somebody who's going to take the very, the admin work, the transactional work off your plate. So you have time for it. That might be the, the key. Um, so opening up space for yourself or hiring somebody, um, like me who has the ability to come in sit down with your people well and i say come in i'm saying come in virtually or and sit down with the people have one-on-ones figure out where the gaps are and write and develop these these processes and these systems talk you know we would identify what do you have do you have a mentorship program do you have training for your new employees do you have standard operating procedures this is a whole housed in one spot do you have tr ongoing trainings um are they digitized so that you can push them out to people i mean there's there's a whole back end world 
that needs yeah. to be developed. And so I would come in and help and work with a team to help develop that and, and um, you know, any part of that. And then also, you know, John, to you, you know, people need coaches to coach them through. They need to know where their gaps are. I can kind of come in and fill those gaps with my knowledge and expertise and, and actually hands-on sometimes writing these documents and getting them in place and even training teams on it. But your ability to identify where, what that is with your, your um, clients and saying, okay, this is really what you need. I think you're kind of the big, the big picture. And then I'm the implementer, the yeah. integrator. Does that make sense? Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, companies today need to be, I'm just going back to the three-year vision, look at their three-year vision, reverse engineer where they want to go, um, strategize, come up with ideas, understand all the nooks and crannies from a strategic standpoint. And then they need someone to actually create the documents, the checklist, the streamline, the systems, the processes, which is like literally like step one, step two, step three, step four. Um, you know, that a, a lot of times, you know, I work with people like you or you and say, okay, and then you're building it as we sit in a room and strategically discuss what's going yeah. on. But you need that documenter, that integrator, that implementer that can actually do it. That's critical. Yeah. Uh, all right, Jamie, this was a fun, first, I it was uh, fun too. virtual. You know, I think, you know, in, in, in quick summary, you gave everybody, um, um, or we gave everybody a lot to think about. Um, and, you know, I'm just going to kind of highlight them across the, the, um, the floor right now. But I think it's really critical. If you can give one piece of um, advice, what would that be moving forward for the people who are listening? Um, my advice would be to pause and, and evaluate, pause and evaluate. And if you don't know where to begin, you know, hire somebody like a business coach to, to help evaluate and then hire the right people to document and put it into place. Um, I think that we're just going, we're going and, and, and kind of, you know, shooting in the dark a little bit and it's time to kind of turn the lights on and, and take the time to figure it out because this is a new world yeah. and it's, I think it's just going to stay that way. And so, yeah. um, so yeah, this is fun. I appreciate you letting me like geek out on these topics. Yeah, no, I love this it. Is my, this yeah. is my fun, so. I love it. And and to me, uh, my parting advice would be plan, 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 document, document, document. Yeah. Uh, Jamie, tell everybody how they can get a hold of you if they want to reach out. Jamie at virtualadminconsultant.com or uh, www.virtualadminconsultant.com is my website. And then my phone number is at the bottom, 798-3923-248 area code. So right. reach out to me. I'd love to be able to help. And um, I I really am looking forward to our next Think Virtual. So yeah. no, this was fun. This was fun. You did great. And it's fun to do it with you. Those are my dogs in the background, which you know. <laughs> um, all right, Jamie. Um, great job. Um, this was fun. This was a lot of fun. Um, everybody, thanks for listening. And uh, I just want to leave with one parting thing. If you're used to having people come into your office all the time and the virtual world is new to you, reach out to Jamie, reach out to me. We can educate you a little bit about how easy it is. Um, I have seven, eight virtual people that work on um, uh, with me and they are unbelievable. And because of systems and processes, they work all over the country and we run a seamless operation. So, um, and thanks to just, you know, to all of them. Like I couldn't do what I do without them. So For sure. gratitude yeah, to so, your team. They're amazing. Yeah. yeah. Gratitude to my team. And, um, you know, uh, that's all. All right, everybody. Thanks for listening. Jamie. Thanks. Bye. So much. All right. Bye everybody. <laughs>